Hey everybody, it's Scott coming to you live from the road. Kim's driving the car and I'm uh, just going to leave this little blog here. Um, I know we've been talking about the seventh day, but I don't want to talk about that today. I want to talk about coronavirus. So uh, several things that I, I just want to mention. This might take a little bit to get out, but uh, very important, I think, for the church to understand exactly what is taking place here. Uh, I had mentioned at the beginning of the year that I had one of the things that I felt uh, were three words that I was given division shaking and warfare and that I had felt that the warfare was more so tied to, definitely tied to this America and also tied to um, the uh, uh, election that we have coming up this year um, as things progressed and I had gotten that word in November but as things progressed uh, the um, what uh, I had realized was that the, I had seen that the onslaught seemed to be sickness that was occurring. I had shared that uh, probably a month or so ago. And now I realize that it seems that this onslaught of the demonic that had that was uh, set to come for 2020 is this coronavirus. And so um, I want to talk about that a little bit because I do sense uh, that the devil is using it to bring fear to the church. And uh, that should not be the case. We can see how it is so irrational, which fear is irrational. And we see how much of that fear is presently uh, working in the world, in the media, uh, politicians trying to do the same. And we've got to see that coronavirus is nothing more than any other sickness that has ever been on the face of the earth. It's no different than anything that you can name. All sickness is a name and subject to the name of Jesus. For every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Every name must bow to the name of Jesus. For he is exalted above all and he's exalted above coronavirus. Uh, one of the things that I noticed uh, in this whole idea of fear is the scripture teaches us in Hebrews 2.14 that it says that he came to redeem us who all their lives were subject to fear of death and uh, uh, and bondage because of the fear. And so we have to see that um, we are not subject to fear of death and we are not subject to fear of uh, the coronavirus. As a matter of fact, um, one of the main things that was spoken to Joshua uh, in chapter 1 when he was to take Moses' place was for him to be strong and not to be afraid, but to be courageous. So we see there in that admonition from the Lord, from Father God to Joshua, we were speaking to him to be strong and courageous. And if he's challenging him to do that, is that something that he needs to believe God for, or is it something that he has a choice for? There are so many things that I think oftentimes we move by feelings which is emotions, which is part of the soul, and not moved by the very character of the spirit. And the and for us who are Christians, the new creation spirit that dwells within us, which is united with Christ, the real us, the real man in Christ, one with Christ, has uh, many things in it that supersede what our emotions and our soul might feel. And fear is one of those. And so I believe that that's being strong and of good courage was an admonition and a choice for Joshua. He says this, Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. It takes strength and courage for us to stand upon the word of God. And he says, "Don't that you won't turn left or right, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law, we quote the scripture all the time, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. See, so as we meditate upon the word of God, making that our priority, not what politicians are saying, not what the news media is saying, but what the spirit of God is saying and what the word of God is saying. It says this book of the law will not depart from our mouth, meaning the only thing that should come forth from our mouth is the word of God. And the Word of God, we, as I already said, the name of Jesus supersedes the name coronavirus. We have, a, we have words of truth. By Jesus' stripes we are healed. The whippings that he took at the cross, it supersedes coronavirus. It, he took it for the healing of every single thing that could happen upon the face of the earth. 
coronavirus is no surprise to God. He knew from the beginning of creation, from day six of creation, that this very thing would happen in this time frame. And that speaks something because of those who are alive and who are alive in Christ in this very moment. It speaks something of the purpose of those who are Christians in this moment. That he knew that you would be here. He knew that you would be in Christ. He knew that you would have the power of Jesus Christ within you to be a witness to the world in the midst of turmoil that's being created over a virus named coronavirus. And so he continues there, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Why? That you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, that you might be able to show to the world that by Jesus' stripes we are healed and made whole. That that as uh, I, I like standing on Romans 8, verse 2, where he says, uh, the, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus makes me free from the law of sin and death. So I have no need to fear death. I have no need to fear sin. I can overcome and walk in victory over sin and over death, which comes from what? Sickness. And so I can walk in victory over coronavirus. But John G. Lake, the great apostle to Africa, took the very bubonic plague, put it on his hand, and they put it under a microscope to take a look at it and saw that the bubonic plague actually died on his flesh. When they asked him why this happened and why he was not contracting the disease, he quoted that very scripture saying that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus makes me free from the law of sin and death. And bubonic plague could not dwell on his body, nor can coronavirus dwell on our bodies or within our bodies. And so we don't need to fear, but we need to stand on the truth of the word of God that we may, what? Observe to do all that is written in it, and then our way will be prosperous, and then we will have good success. He says, have I not commanded you for the third time? Commanded him, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, I had a dream. I believe it was October of... Uh, 1981 long time ago after I had come out of uh, Bible school and I had this dream where in the dream there was a man trying to kill me with a knife uh, I was struggling with the man and fighting with the man and running from the man and when I awoke from the dream you know it was one of those dreams where it was definitely demonically influenced and I was calling out the name of Jesus. Do you ever have those dreams and you're calling out the name of Jesus? And as you're calling out in the name of Jesus, it feels like you got a sock in your mouth and you're trying to get that name out. And as I finally said, in Jesus' name, I awoke. As I awoke from the dream, I saw in the spirit realm and there was a demon sitting on me. And uh, a small little impy demon sitting on my body he saw me, he recognized that I saw him in the spirit, and as that name Jesus came out of my mouth, he, he, he tapped into fear and immediately turned and was out of the room. The uh, um, thing that I learned about that experience was when I awoke, my entire body couldn't move. It was, um, there was an anointing upon me from that demonic force, which was an anointing of fear. I learned from that experience, as I discussed it with the Lord, that fear is the anointing that the devil works in. And it is faith and love, the anointing that comes against fear. The opposite of fear is faith. When we, when we fear, we put faith in the devil and his words. When we walk in faith, we put faith in God and his words. And so when we walk in faith, then we overcome that fear anointing that the devil releases. Let me tell you, there is an anointing of fear. It is part of the onslaught of coronavirus that is trying to be released upon the face of the earth. Look at this next passage with me. I want to read this to you. We're uh, almost at our destination here, so I'm trying to wrap this up. My um, iPad will respond here. Psalm 18, starting in verse uh, 30. I want to read 30 to 39 to you quickly. And he says this, As for God, His way is perfect. Is this the right one? 
I'm sorry, verse 29. For by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like feet of deer and sets me on high places above coronavirus. He teaches my hands to make war in the realm of the spirit. We're talking about one of the words for 2020 is warfare. And so we need to learn to war in the spirit. It's not just standing on the word of God, but also confronting demonic powers and the church itself rising up in this hour and banding together to confront the demonic onslaught that is partially being manifested in this coronavirus and the fear that is associated with it. Not only that, but us standing and speaking truth in the marketplace and letting others know the fact that God is above coronavirus. If they have God and they have the truth of his word, they have no need to fear and that he, will, he, will, he can literally repel it from their physical bodies. So he goes on to say, he teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. And normally when we think of a bow, we think of it made of wood, something that's bendable and pliable. He's saying that he gives me such strength that I can actually bend a bow that is made of bronze metal. He goes on to say, you have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Yes, we have a shield of salvation, salvation from coronavirus. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me so my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were destroyed. I have wounded them so they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. I've been saying for uh, quite some time now that the warrior is meat for the warfare. This is what David was saying in this psalm. The warrior is meat for the warfare. We as the warriors of God are meat for the warfare of coronavirus in this time. You know, the word itself, corona, if you look it up, means wreath or crown. It's speaking of the, um, what, what probably, it probably came from uh, the time of the old Olympics, original Olympics, where those who, had, who were the victors were given a wreath crown. Uh, upon their heads to show that they were the victors of their event. And uh, interesting that coronavirus seeming to be a crown maybe in the demonic realm, a crown of viruses similar to something like Ebola, that what I believe prophetically God is speaking to the church is that it is time for us to show the kingship of Jesus Christ that Jesus has made his people to be kings and priests, that we are, as the church of God, to be those who exemplify and show the world the glory in the fact that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and has given us the victory over coronavirus. We don't have to fight. We've already gotten the victory. Who is that that can condemn us? Who is that that can have any victory over us, Paul says in Romans 8? For we are one with Christ, and we have the victory and walk in the victory that he has given us. I want to finish with this one last thing, and I want to read to you uh, Psalm 91. It says this, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, finding that secret place with him, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him alone will I trust. I added alone. But we need it to be him alone that we trust and that we find the place that he is our refuge from coronavirus. He's our fortress from coronavirus. I want to encourage you to spend time with him. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. He sh his truth shall be your shield and buckler. He's expounding on what he started with. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, those who doubt and don't believe, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. 
Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall before befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. This is Old Testament. How much more in the New Testament, in that Jesus has taken the burden of coronavirus on his own body, as he sacrificed himself for us and then rose from the dead victorious over it. For by his stripes we are healed. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he will give his angels charge over you. His angels have charge over us to keep plagues from our dwelling, to keep you in all your ways, he says. In their hands they'll bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone, and that we might walk above coronavirus. You shall tread upon lions and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot because he, meaning us, have set our love upon him. Therefore, he says, I will deliver you. I will set you on high because you've known my name. You will call upon me and I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. With long life, I will satisfy you and I will show you and reveal to you that you might see clearly the victory of Jesus, I will show you my salvation. Thanks for watching, guys. God bless you. We have the victory. Let us show the victory to the world. It is time for the church to connect, to combine together, to fight in the spirit together, and to reach the world. This could be the greatest time of the church to shine. How do you not know that maybe you were born for such a time as this? If you're watching this, you're a Christian, I'm telling you right now, you were born for such a time as this, to show the world the victory of Jesus, to be walking in the divine health that he procured for us on the cross, and to be a witness to the world. This could be the greatest awakening in the United States and in countries all across the world. God bless you guys. Love you. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye.